Okay, here we are back at the loom. I've got my boat shuttle. It's loaded up with uh, weft thread or yarn. And uh, it, um, you can see it's ready to go. Here are the threads that I used just to spread the warp. Okay, now I've got shaft one. First of all, let me explain that there's a, a type of ratio between the warp threads and the weft threads. If they're both of similar uh, type and diameter, then the, the weaving, as I understand, will be more balanced. In other words, you'll see the weft as much as you see the warp. If the warp is smaller, then you see more weft. If the warp is larger, you would. Uh, if the warp is larger, you'd see less weft. So something's going on there all the time. It also has to do with the, as I'll show, the tension. Uh, how much extra yarn you need um, when you pull the uh, reed back, uh, because it has to go over and under each thread as it's compressed. And so, in, in a sense, it, it tries to short shorten itself. So anyway, now, uh, the first thing is that we're on uh, shuttle, uh, shafts number one and two. There are all these patterns, one and two, two and three, three and four, one and four, is the sequence that I'm using. But there are any number of sequences that can be uh, used. I suppose you could do uh, one and two, three and four, and then go to one and four, and uh, two and three and back and forth but the main thing is that you've got to keep repeating the same uh, sequence over and over again otherwise you'll see uh, a perfect um, copy of your um, miss sequence I guess you could call it uh, and then you have to reverse go back through the sequence and pull the yarn out until you find out uh, where you went off the track now, uh, I realize, you know, of course, it's, it's just good practice to have a little piece of paper up in front of you where you show uh, sequence 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 1, 4. Uh, I tried to do it without the little piece of paper, and what happens is that you, uh, you forget uh, the sequence just because it's kind of mesmerizing once you start to uh, uh, weave. And the other thing is, if you want to stop, you want to stop on a sequence and know whether uh, what sequence it is, what step in the sequence, and you want to know whether you uh, have just moved the shuttle through or you need to move the shuttle through, and whether you have used the reed to compress the uh, uh, the weaving. So it sounds simple until you miss once, and then you realize just write it down, and uh, you can do the you know you'll keep you on track. Um, let's start weaving here now. Okay, I've got uh, uh, shaft number one and two uh, pressed down. So, and I also know because of that sequence, I'm going to go from left to right. As I pull the the yarn through, if I pull it through too tight and keep doing that, in comes the warp threads. You start to realize that it's a, it's a common beginner's mistake. And of course, I made it. Is that it starts to narrow in. The selvage uh, is too is too tight. The other uh, extreme, of course, is that once you realize that, then you start to leave an extra amount of thread out, and the selvage becomes too loose, and you see these little loops along the selvage. So, uh, as a beginner, I fought that uh, on the you know, on the first uh, uh, weaving uh, experience, and it would get too tight, too loose, too tight, too loose, all the way through until. I realized that I had to come up with a way of, of um, controlling that part of the weaving. Now, uh, according to the videos and the books and, and uh, uh, teachers, uh, you'll see if you watch someone weaving, a professional weaver, that they'll leave the thread out at a, like a 45 degree angle and then when it's compressed back in, it kind of tightens itself and, and gives you just the right amount of thread to maintain a, a nice looking selvage. The problem I had with that is, I'll show you as I go through here, is that the little boat shuttle it doesn't have much room. So I had to make kind of a hump in the yarn uh, going through the, the weft. 
And I found also on the second uh, attempt uh, at weaving, going through the loom, that I could pay, I, I would pay close attention to just what, you know, is it one inch, three quarters of an inch, or an inch and a half, and that changes on, uh, changes when the warp thread uh, is a different size than the uh, weft, uh, weft thread or yarn. So I realized that, okay, I could take my finger in there and pull it out to about an inch or inch and a half, and then compress with the reed, and if I continue to maintain that little distance there, that I had much better luck with the selvages not pulling in or being too loose. Okay, so I finished uh, um, uh, sequence one and two. Now I go up and change it over here to two and three, and back goes the boat shuttle. See, it's hard, it's not much room in there. I pull it through and kind of grab it with my fingers and then pull it down, set the shuttle back on the, on the weaving. Tamp it down, go to sequence three and four, and back through this way from left to right. And also, you keep your finger on the little um, thimble in the center there so it doesn't spin and give you too much thread. It's pretty tricky. You can see, once you, you know, do this for a long period of time, you have this regular right, little set motion you do that keeps things uh, consistent. It's also, all, all just like acting like a machine. It reminds me of uh, when I was a potter that the, the opening of the clay on the wheel, that your hands, once you get good at it, is a, almost a machine-like operation. One, you open the clay, you spread it, and you draw it up the sides. And um, once you get in that groove, you have good luck uh, making pots, um, one right after the other. So there, now I've got a nice little, little hump in there. It could be a little larger. I pull it back, and now I'm on to sequence one and four. And back through I go. Now you got to be careful when you send the shuttle through that you don't grab one of the threads from the bottom or the top. Oh, because then things really, it, it gets all tied up and you have to go back and unthread it. So, there. See, now I've got a pretty good side here. And I pulled it just enough tight there. And back it goes. Now I'm back to sequence one and, and two. And I know that that's from left to right. So... So far, <laughs> I've maintained the sequence through and back. One and two, and that's three and uh, three, uh, two and three, through, whoop, a little extra thread there, pull it back this way, and uh, it's two and three, three and four, back through left to right. And also, when you, I noticed, uh, uh, you know, as a beginner, that uh, some yarns, are, of course, more fuzzy than other yarns, and so they, when you pull them through, they they catch and drag on certain things. Now the warp thread is kind of a smooth um, cotton, and it seems to it seems to work a lot better for, uh, as a, a warp thread for me at this time. And the weft thread is, is kind of fuzzy, and it kind of hangs together. Now, I noticed also that when you have to, when you make a mistake, and you have to go backwards and pull the threads out, that if both the warp thread and the weft thread are nice and fuzzy, a lot of little hair sticking off them, boy, they, they hang together, and you have to go through and pick and separate, and sometimes use my little tiny scissors to um, snip away the little parts that get so interlocked that they they just don't want to let let loose. Okay, so that's uh, uh, three, uh, four, uh, three and four, and now I go one and four back through and kind of pull it tight there. Give myself a little slack, and I'm back to one and four again. And there's where I put the boat shuttle in there. And on my little piece of paper up here, I've got a paper clip on uh, sequence number one and two. So now I know I can stop there. Uh, I know that I'm on sequence one and two. I know that the shuttle is, the next step is for the shuttle to go through the warp, then pull the reed back, and I'm on to sequence uh, two and three. Now, the next thing that I learned 
uh, after several tries was that uh, to keep an eye on the um, twill pattern because if I miss Q on the sequence it'll show right in here somewhere and you'll say boy that something is just not right so looks everything looks good each little twill sequence is going on a diagonal right up through and uh, you get better at watching that as, you, as you're going along so you don't go too far and then have to retrace your your steps the salvage is again I noticed also that my right salvage and uh, the books and the videos kind of confirm this that a person does better on one salvage than the other and my right salvage has always been uh, reasonably uniform for a beginner and the left one is the one that's sometimes a little loose there's about four four or five uh, strands here they're a little loose and then a couple a little tighter and, uh, and there's one that's loose another one that's tight another one that's loose as I started out but it's fun I like these colors they seem to go together that's the bit of course the other thing that you start to learn right off is that uh, what colors are you going to uh, use and which ones uh, go together which ones uh, I found a nice little uh, color chart book that uh, gets you on the right track right from the start on uh, similar uh, colors uh, colors from one family uh, also it shows you how to find contrasting colors and uh, it, it looks different you can hold the yarn up uh, when it's in the um, uh, on the the uh, uh, cone or in a ball and you see the two yarns together and you get one idea but then when you start to weave it looks a little different but I'm happy with this so far so uh, you just keep on going uh, once the, 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 you might be able to see here that the boat shuttle is getting a little tight in there it's a tiny little loom and so you can only go an uh, inch or inch and a half and you have to release the back um, roller where the warp threads are coming this way a couple of cogs and then you tighten up on the front one and pull the material down around the front beam and around the front roller and then you've got uh, more room in the shed to uh, move the boat through and I've seen when I watch the videos of the larger looms there's a lot more you can go it seems to be that you can go a lot further before you have to adjust the material the the, uh, the shed is just it's larger it's longer uh, but this is a very small loom and it's perfect to learn the basics of, um, of weaving Besides that, it's a lot of fun.